Nero was one of ancient Rome's most notorious emperors, whose name is synonymous with death and destruction. Emperor Nero might be one of the biggest cheaters in the history of the world, and his transgressions only get worse from there. If you're interested in stories like Emperor Nero's, you should consider hitting that subscribe button, because that's what we specialize in. And you won't want to miss a single one of our epic uploads. Now, without any more hesitation, let's take a look at some of the most unspeakable things that Emperor Nero did during his reign. Cheated his way to the top. As you might know, Nero had an affinity for cheating, and that's what actually led him to secure his position as the Emperor of Rome for 14 years. He became the ruler of the Roman Empire in 54 AD, though he wasn't the initial successor to the throne. You see, Nero was born on December 15, 37 AD, under the name Lucius Domitius Ehenobarbus, to his mother Agrippa and his father Neus. His father died three years after Nero's birth, and his mother, Agrippa, was exiled from Rome for supposedly plotting to overthrow the current emperor at the time, Caligula. At that time, Nero was sent to live with his aunt on his father's side, Domitia Lepida, who was actually the mother of Claudius, the man who became emperor of Rome after Caligula's death. And after Claudius became the emperor, he allowed Agrippa to return and actually married her in 49 AD. Little did he know that he was setting up for a new family to take over the empire. After being adopted by Emperor Claudius, Nero's birth name was officially changed to the one he's known by today, Nero Claudius Caesar Drusus Germanicus. Fast forward to 54 AD, the year that Emperor Claudius died under suspicious circumstances, which led ancient historians to believe that Agrippa poisoned him. This is mainly because of the suspicious circumstances that took place before and after the emperor's death as Agrippa had somehow managed to remove the tutors that were teaching Claudius's biological children. She also reportedly managed to replace the emperor's praetorian guards and their prefects who were in support of his sons to ensure that the new guard officers were loyal to her instead. That made it so that there were practically no arguments against Nero assuming power when his adoptive father Claudius was killed. In other words, Nero, with the help of his mother Agrippa, cheated his way into the position of emperor. Emperor Nero committed matricide. As Nero rose to power and became emperor, he also married Claudius's daughter, Octavia, who became close with Agrippa and inadvertently became the source of conflict that actually led to Agrippa's death. You see, Nero, though he was a married man, was known to have had multiple affairs during his marriage with Octavia, and at times throughout his reign, he even had multiple wives. But many speculate that no affair affected Nero's life quite like the one that he supposedly had with a woman named Poppea Sabina, who was married at the time. According to the reports, Nero's affair with Poppea was opposed by Agrippa, and though many argue that neither Nero nor Poppea would have anything to gain from his mother's death, it's believed that at least the emperor was directly involved. According to accounts that were made by Suetonius, Nero had a former freedman named Anicetus see that his mother Agrippa got caught in an international shipwreck. However, somehow Agrippa managed to survive the wreckage and made her way back to shore before she was officially executed by the same man who Nero had hired to see her shipwrecked. Anicetus killed Agrippa and reported that her death was a suicide, though many historians believe wholeheartedly that Nero was involved in her death. Nero was obsessed with music. Now, Nero did have one bad habit that didn't necessarily make him a bad guy, it just made him really annoying. Emperor Nero was known to be obsessed with the performing arts, but at a point simply watching theatrical performances and listening to musical pieces wasn't enough. He wanted to be part of the show, and though he tried his hardest and worked with the best of the best to practice and become a musician, he just lacked that bit of talent that makes a great musician. That didn't stop him from forcing his terrible music on those around him, though. According to historical reports, Nero's obsession with music started early during his education when he got a taste of the arts, and from then on he only wanted more. After becoming emperor, Nero forced a man named Terpnus to meet him because Terpnus was supposedly the greatest lyre player in the entire empire. Nero forced Terpnus to play for him multiple nights in a row, where the emperor was simply captivated by the magical music. But when it came time for him to pick up the lyre for himself, he just couldn't produce results that were even remotely similar. Emperor Nero made his first official debut as a musician 
as he performed in Neapolis or modern-day Naples. During his performance, an earthquake struck and shook the entire theatre, though the emperor continued to play. The audience ran as the theatre collapsed and thankfully no one was hurt, except for Nero's ego, that is. He believed that his citizens should have been so captivated by his music that they didn't even notice the earthquake around them. And that's just crazy talk. It's even been reported that Nero once locked his citizens into a theatre in which he performed for so long that a woman gave birth right in the middle of the emperor's act. When it comes down to it though, Nero's music obsession was one of the more harmless habits that the emperor had. The Great Fire of Rome One massive misdeed that was supposedly committed by Emperor Nero is still debated to this day. Many believe that he was directly responsible for the Great Fire of Rome in 64 AD that practically leveled 14 districts in the great ancient city. The fire started on July the 18th, 64 AD, and is believed to have begun in the merchant shops that surrounded the chariot stadium in Rome before spreading throughout the city. As the flames continued to spread, they began to engulf entire sections of the city, and in the end, the great fire was said to have burned for nine days straight, and after it was finally over, a rumor quickly began to spread that it was Nero's fault that the fire started in the first place. You see, it was around this time that Nero had been planning on building a massive palace for himself, known as the Domus Aurea, or Golden House. And instead of using the Roman treasury to rebuild and fix up all of the districts that were affected by the fire, Emperor Nero used the money and the location of the destroyed district to build his dream palace, the Domus Aurea. These claims came to light after Suetonius, a Roman historian who kept records of the Roman Empire's early imperial era, wrote about Nero's supposed plans to use arson to clear the area and make room for his Domus Aurea. This is arguably the most believed and respected theory about the burning of Rome, considering the fact that when all was said and done, Nero went to great lengths to ensure his palace was built in the exact location that had been cleared by the disastrous fire. Another popular rumour that was tossed around by Suetonius and other writers and historians from the Roman Empire like Pliny the Elder was that Nero committed arson in order to create an epic backdrop for him to put on a theatrical performance depicting the burning of Troy. Other, less proven theories have even suggested Nero held a musical performance while Rome burned behind him, though many are indifferent about whether or not that's true. While it does sound like something the egotistical, music-obsessed emperor would do, there aren't enough proof or written accounts to back that up. Burning of Christians If there was one thing that was clear during that time period, though, it was that many of the Roman citizens blamed Nero for the fire, and Nero was well aware that he held the blame and knew that he needed to pawn it off on another group of people. And he decided to go with a religious group that he truly despised, the Christians. That's right, Emperor Nero blamed the Christians for starting the fire, and what he did to them as punishment was truly disturbing. After publicly calling out the Christians, thousands of members of the religion were rounded up and tortured or executed for all to see. However, the most notable, painful and grotesque manner of punishment was something that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. Nero had his guards and workers construct a large pyre just in time for a festival, where he had the remaining Christian prisoners covered in tar before lighting them on fire to be burned alive and used as human torches to light up the festival. It's also been said that the emperor even had people dance around the burning pyre of bodies naked and in a ritualistic manner. No matter how you paint it, Emperor Nero was definitely a twisted dude. Increased Roman inflation for personal gain. As mentioned before, Emperor Nero did manage to have his Domus Aurea built in the same location that the Great Fire of Rome destroyed, but as a result of poor money management, he also became the first Roman Emperor to increase inflationary pressure on his citizens. The Domus Aurea, or Golden House, was a massive landscaped complex that was constructed in the heart of the city, mainly occupying Oppian Hill. It included a 30-meter tall statue of Nero, as well as multiple temples that to this day haven't really been excavated, which means there's a lot more that could be learned about Nero's Golden House. One thing that historians can be certain of, though, is that the cost of the Emperor's Domus Aurea didn't come cheap and nearly crippled the empire financially. After much of the great Roman city was destroyed by fire, the Roman treasury used all of the money that they had to rebuild. And in order to completely fund that, plus Nero's massive palace, Nero had his government begin to increase the tax rate of the citizens. 
He also forced the provinces of the Roman Empire to pay heavy tributes. And when that wasn't enough, Nero resorted to devaluing the Roman currency to meet a portion of the costs, which officially increased the inflationary pressure in Rome for the first time in the city's history. Cheating during the chariot races Now, one thing that Nero could have done to keep his citizens happy after burning the city and raising the taxes involved a sporting event that he actually loved and that would be to organize and host the Olympic chariot races, which is exactly what he did. Sounds pretty nice, right? Wrong. Nero didn't care about these races because they made his people happy. All he cared about was winning as much as he could, no matter what. The emperor would enter chariot races on a regular basis, and he cheated his way to victory literally every time. The most notorious of which was during an event where he told his opponents to bring four horse chariots to race in, and he himself showed up in a chariot that was pulled by ten horses. This made Nero much faster on the course, though he ended up falling off his chariot anyway. But if you thought that this meant the emperor lost, you'd be wrong. He actually had them stop the race and declare him the winner of it without his chariot ever crossing the finish line. It's been reported that his cheating was so out of hand that in 67 AD, Nero hosted 1,100 chariot races, which averages out at about four a day. And he won all of them. It was as clear as day that Emperor Nero was not only a cheater who used his power for his own personal means, but also a horrifying ruler who didn't hesitate to hurt those around him for his own gain. What was Nero's most heinous act that we talked about in today's video, in your opinion? Make sure you let us know in the comments below.